<clears throat> Hello everyone. I am here with a Bible study. <clears throat> Tonight we are going to be reading in the book of Acts. We'll have a little surprise treat at the end of tonight's Bible study. Let's see here. We'll be reading Acts chapter 2 tonight, which is... not too long. And right now I'm going to read to you Acts chapter 2, verse 17, which says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And then I'm going to read, after I read chapter 2, I'm going to read the devotion that goes along with it, and then read the faith step homework and then i'll read the surprise i got for you guys tonight so let me go ahead and read chapter two of acts when the day of pentecost came they were all together hang on let me put my glasses on let's see it better when the day of pentecost came they were all together in one place Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there they were saying, they were saying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Paratheans, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and <clears throat> Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Paragai, and Papalia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya, near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts of Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God, in our own tongues, amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only mine in the morning. Oh, sorry. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and every one who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, 
put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let my Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what he was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and he and we are the witnesses of that fact. Exalted from the Father, <clears throat> the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you know, what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord for your God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation those who accepted his message were baptized and about three thousand were added to their number that day they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to the prayer Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles, and the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone as he had in need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And that was chapter 2 of Acts. And now I'll go ahead and read the devotion. And the devotion is by Isabella Yasako. And she writes... The Bible is full of prominent old folks. God, hold on. These glasses are so scratched up. I'm going to take them off. The Bible is full of prominent old folks God recruited for vital kingdom missions. Abraham and Noah, Elizabeth, mother of John, and assorted mature apostles. God is definitely not ageist. One of the things I most enjoy about living in the sunshine state is the median age. At 50, I'm not always the oldest person in the room. Everywhere I see seniors who are living meaningful and fulfilled lives of purpose, many with second or third careers, and ministries, new romances, dynamic leisure activities, and revived dreams. 
American culture favors youth more than any other on the globe. Having recently hit the mid-century mark, I'm amazed that I'm enjoying one of the best decades yet. I fulfilled some lifelong desires, including living near the beach and find new, deeply satisfying friendships and exciting opportunities emerging at a time when I might have been in the twilight of my career. Here, just in case I wanted something more concrete than God's word, I'm surrounded by many supportive examples of people finding new purpose and joy in their second halves of life. God used a very old Noah to build an ark and blessed menopausal Elizabeth and John the Baptist, who paved the way for Jesus, so he can still use us as we grow in our maturity. The ageless God is not hindered by age. So true. And Abraham and Sarah were very old when they were blessed with Isaac as well. I must say. So age does not matter. God can bless you at any age. With a miracle. Of any kind. The faith step homework for tonight is, in Christ, it is never too late. Jot down some of the unfulfilled dreams you fear you're too old to fulfill. Talk to God about whether and how he may help you realize them now. So write down something you still want to happen in your life and talk to God about it. Pray about it. Okay. And tonight, I'm going to read three circle of kindness things for you guys. People write in to a book and three things, three people write in where people have helped them in a certain way, have done kind things for them, and they write in telling about it. So I wanted to tell you guys, read the stories to you guys, three different ones. So the first one is by Arlene Linhart from Denver, North Carolina. She says, I'm so glad I was finally able to repay their kindness. I spent the first 62 years of my life in California, but after I re retired, we moved to North Carolina. Shortly thereafter, my husband of nearly 46 years became ill. We had great neighbors that were close to my age, but we didn't get to visit much. But one neighbor would always mow our lawn each time he mowed his own. Now we recently had knee surgery and his wife broke her arm. So I volunteered to drive him to his therapy and take them grocery shopping. I'm so glad I've been able to repay them their kindness. So they helped each other. I had tears in my eyes as I thanked him for his help. I'm in a wheelchair and I rolled out most days to the drugstore or library for a little fresh air or sunshine. One Saturday I was strolling to a native, or sorry, I was strolling to navigate up onto the sidewalk when I noticed a car stop. A young man leapt out as if to shoot from a cannon and scrambled toward me, grabbing hold of my handles of my chair he gave me a boost over the edge of the curb. I had tears in my eyes as I thanked him and laughing, requesting a hug to boot. To this day, I refer to him as my Viking because he had awesome red hair and was so kind and strong. <laughs> That's something, isn't it? You surely don't find people like that anymore. That was very, very kind. That's truly, truly a kind person. We need more people like that in the world. And the last one, he made me feel so loved and cared for. My husband passed away at the end of last year and our, on our anniversary this year, I decided to go to a restaurant we had this year. I decided to go to a restaurant we had gone to 
for a number of years for lunch to celebrate. I ordered the same dish he and I had enjoyed together after his last radiation treatment. During my meal, the manager came by and asked if I was Dorothy. I told her I was, and she told me that my nephew, who lives in Arizona, had just called. He had paid for my meal because he wanted me to have a lovely day. I had mentioned my anniversary plan when we spoke on the phone a few days earlier. It was such a sweet surprise and a wonderful act of kindness for him to do. It made me feel so loved. That was so sweet, too. So here's what it looks like if you guys want to see this three little articles. So I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's Bible study, and I hope you guys have a good night's sleep. Bye, guys.